heading out on another adventure. Long-eared owls, short-eared owls. Those are my goals. Not too much to ask. But of course, these days there's a lot of uh, back channel intel. I'm a little worried about the brakes. You hear them? You hear them grinding. Well, I'm rolling up to this urban park where these long-eared owls are allegedly looking In 1,000 feet, you will arrive at your destination. Still below zero. And 10 below. Kind of a cool place. This is only a few miles from where I grew up <laughs> in New Hope. That was a blast. I met Aaron and uh, and my friend Mike Deck. They locked on to a few long ears. I guess there's like five or six overwintering or more overwintering here. So yeah, brisk walk at five below zero. Those guys, Aaron had some great eyes and got some great looks at some long-eared owls. And they will be semi-colonial in the winter. They'll have these semi-colonial roosts. This is very common and they'll even come out and hunt in the open at dusk. I guess there's a lot of voles here. <laughs> I will see if I can come back and shoot some long eards flying in the open. Wouldn't that be cool? This was the really the last regular Minnesota owl I needed, needed, wanted <laughs> to photograph and to take video of. I photographed some babies in the Saxon bug a few years ago, but and I'd seen them before, but just never got a shot. And it's for an upcoming project, which I'll let you know in a few months. Yeah, pretty cool. So onward, little frosty, frosty, frosty. My jaw is frozen and I hope to come back and maybe catch them hunting out in the open. That's a pretty rare thing. So we'll give that a shot. So I'm down here in, I guess I'd be south, southeastern Minnesota now. <laughs> I had a, just a big flock of snow buntings right down the road, I'm trying to crawl up to them, get some bird in the landscape shots. They're a little spooky, but cool to see so many of them.
Well, I just kind of scouted a lot too early for short eared owls yet. It's only 1 p.m. <laughs> so I'm going down to Dodge County to a spot where there's been snowy owls in this kind of nondescript corner of the county. Drift busting and looking for snowy owls. Had two to three inches of snow last night. It's whipped around on the prairies here. Uh, don't see any. I got my snowy owls. I am here at the Armstrong family wetlands and from what I understand it's privately owned and the family put it into a conservation easement which is fantastic and I uh, just had a flyby short-eared owl there's about uh, five or six cars there's short-eared owl right now let's see if I can it's quite a ways out but let's see if I, I guess maybe I'll just plant myself here and wait I mean you just got to pick your spot right and stay there I guess otherwise you're gonna just run back and forth and drive back and forth and that's no fun one landed right across from me <laughs> uh, still a ways out but uh, had a vole and uh, yeah picked it to pieces and ate it and put on the 2x extender on the r5 with the 100 to 500 lens but the wind was just shaking it you know I'll see if I can stabilize it actually got some light right now but the short-eared owls I see two are way out there So now I'm just waiting for more owls and closer owls and my face and fingers are freezing because there is a wind chill. Trying to get low here and shoot just above the grass. Uh, light is getting low, so I might start actually doing a little panning. Try and get some uh, panning motion blur shots. That might be that might be kind of cool because uh, there's at least I don't know seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I don't know how many owls are out here, but they're they're catching voles right and left. There must be tens of thousands of voles here. So that's pretty cool. Got some video of that. Okay, here comes another one.
Time to wrap it up here at Armstrong Wetlands for the evening. It's darker than it looks. The iPhone increases the exposure. Uh, I tried some panning shots, but the hollows weren't very close, so probably nothing good there. But yeah, what a blast. At least six, seven short-eared owls. Bald eagle came by, rough-legged hawk, tree sparrow, snow bunting, uh, hen pheasant. Somebody saw, Casey from Winona, saw a flock of Hungarian partridge. Gray partridge, that was one of my targets for the trip. Try for those again later. All right, I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. Got a little snow. Windy, yikes. That is going to be the core of the Arctic air. The temperatures are going to be very cold for the next few days. Terrible during the day today, but tonight, watch what happens as we go through time here. This is tonight at 10 o'clock. The wind chill will be 20 below or colder, 40 below at Brainerd, and then we go into tomorrow morning. We're around 30 to 35 below all over the place. Sunrise is in about 20 minutes, and I'm going through suburban Owatonna. And I don't know, I talked to some folks yesterday and they said the short-eared owls are not very regular in the morning compared to the afternoon. We'll see how it goes. But they're crepuscular, so they, why wouldn't they? But we got like a couple inches of wind-blown snow overnight. Uh, and it's windy. <laughs> Here we are, back to the Armstrong wetlands. It is amazing anything can survive out here. Well, this is maybe kind of a bust this morning. Any owls? Don't see any gray partridge. Yeah, okay. Well, worth a shot. It's kind of a cool day though. Driving is going to be interesting. Ooh, we are busting drifts now. All drift busting. Ah, just flushed. Ah, just flushed a covey of about 12 Hungarian partridge, gray partridge. Uh, golly, that was one of my targets for this trip. And they're out in this field. Of course, it's a private property, of course, but they're a little spooky. So. Let's See if we can get them here. Snow's deep in the ditch. <laughs> Snow is deep in the ditch. Those gray partridge are a mile away now. Well, it was worth a shot. Maybe we'll run into some more.
They're one of those weird birds that likes barren farm fields. They were right along this blown edge where there must have been some seeds blown in or something. They weren't sticking around. All right, let's keep going. I love this stuff. I'm, I am just gonna take any road that catches my fancy. I'm just gonna wind my way. Just totally explore this weather. There's nobody on the road. Ooh, here comes a big snowplow. I know I generally have to go north and west. That's all I need to know. I found a castle on the prairie. I can recalibrate once I get into the bluff lands near the Mississippi River. Getting into the bluff country. My goal was long-eared owl and short-eared owl and got both. Yeah, is there room for improvement and will I be back this winter? <laughs> Absolutely. Would love to get some long-eared owls in flight and maybe some more shots with their eyes open. just had some amazing experience with the long-eared owls hunting this marsh and even on the way out here I kicked out some voles, meadow voles, and that's definitely what they're hunting. Probably five or six in this roost here but maybe up to a dozen. It's 4 30 the sun's going down and long-eared owls coming out and hunting. Yeah, I decided to make the two hour one way drive down here. I mean, how often do you get to see long-eared owls? I mean, hardly ever. And now I'm wondering, now I'm wondering if I'm in the right spot. Uh, you know, it's perfect light. There was an owl hunting here a minute ago, but maybe he's over there and everybody's over there getting a great shot. That dang photographer's dilemma. Am I in the right spot? Is there something happening elsewhere? What the heck am I doing? Well, I think I'm gonna wrap up this quick but exhausting two-day trip to southern Minnesota. I got some cool frosty-faced long-eared owls and short-eared owls. Yeah, I'll be back. Uh, boy, if we had light like this last night, it would have been amazing. Kind of flight shots in good light. But they're a little far out, but it was fun watching their behavior, catching a ton of voles. The bonus was the gray partridge, which most people might not be too excited about, but I was. In the numerous flocks of snow buntings, horned larks, juncos along the roadsides. That was fun to see. Often by this time in winter, or even by the January 1st, we don't have many up north. The snow gets too deep and they move to southern Minnesota. I'm going to get home. My wife's car didn't start this morning and she had to get a ride to work, so I got to figure out what's wrong with that. Yay. But a fun time. And hope you enjoyed it. Here's some of my favorite photos from the trip.
Take care. We will see you on the next episode of Shooting with Sparky.